three, two, one, ignition, and liftoff. Go SpaceX, go IM-1, and the Odysseus lunar lander. For the first time in 52 years, we have landed on the moon again. Leave it to a 14-foot robot named Odysseus to stick the first U.S. moon landing since Apollo. Tonight, history is made in Space City. Nearly 55 years after Neil Armstrong took the first steps on the moon, a Houston company called Intuitive Machines has put a lander on the lunar surface. The first private business to land a spacecraft on the moon. Tonight at 11, data is now coming in from the first American spacecraft to land on the moon in 50 years. Today, for the first time in more than a half century, the U.S. has returned to the moon. Houston, Odysseus has found his new home. And the reason, the point of us doing this is so that humans are able to go from point A, which is Earth, to point B, which would be the moon, and potentially have an entire city there, another settlement there, and then also use that as a launch pad, basically, to launch from the moon to go into point C, which would be deep space, and understanding Mars, and understanding, you know, if there's other life out there, understanding ultimately how humans figure into this realities in which we live. And all of this information is gonna give us insight into our realities here on Earth, because quite frankly, we only have 50% of the data set. We don't understand how humans live in other planets in other ways. So zooming out in terms of this actual mission that has occurred, it was called the Nova Sea. That was the name of the mission. And it took a ship called Odysseus to the moon where Odysseus literally just barely landed on the moon and is now on the moon collecting data. I know this was a nail biter, but we are on the surface and we are transmitting and welcome to the moon. And the data that it's collecting is all sorts of different stuff, you guys. It's gonna be understanding water on the moon, understanding the air on the moon, understanding how to use that environment to actually build a literal city. So if you're envisioning like the Jetsons, if you remember the Jetsons and all that. Meet George Jetson. That's absolutely on point. That's what we're talking about here. We discovered in 2008 that there is in fact, not just some water on the moon, but a ton of water on the moon, ton of ice. What this means is we can go study that and figure out, okay, now we have a resource on the moon that we can use to actually build a city there and generate energy there. And we don't have to bring everything from earth to the moon. It's all existing potentially on the moon already. And so the concept is if we can use this water on the moon, we can basically use that to build cities and 3D print cities with the technology that we have here that we can bring to the moon. And we are actually already building 3D rockets here on Earth. So that concept is not far away whatsoever. It's just using the water that they find on the moon to then build cities with what's called regolith. And the regolith is basically the moon dust that's on the moon that we can use to create the concrete cities out there that would protect us from radiation, that would protect us from, you know, all sorts of other elements that are on the moon that we don't understand just yet how that might affect us. So we understand how humans live on Earth with the gravity here. We do understand now how humans exist in space with zero gravity. We don't actually know yet how humans exist on the moon with that amount of gravity. We, do, we just don't know. We don't know how that will affect our bones, our muscles, what that will do for reproduction. And we need to know that because with all of this race to space going on right now, someone's gonna get there first and someone's gonna get to these other planets first. Right now, this is an actual huge reality because there are two other countries that are kind of leading this charge in addition to the US. That's both China and Russia. Russia staking its claim in a new space race to the moon and Mars. But China is also aiming for the pole. I don't want uh, China to get to the South Pole first with humans and then say, this is ours. And the reason that we need to get there first is because there's kind of an agreement signed by all the countries that are involved in this. There's been about 36 countries that have signed an agreement saying that they will ultimately share the resources. They will essentially be friendly to one another and share you know, the information that they find if they get to the moon first and what that'll look like. The two countries that did not sign this, you guys, are China and Russia. These are two of the biggest and the leading forces on Earth. And so what impact that might have to people on Earth if they didn't share that information or share access to the moon and what they find there is 
crazy because that affects not only resources that we can have on earth, but also the technology that we might be able to use on earth and people's access to all of this technology worldwide. Go, no, go for flight two of Starship. Five, four, three. Elon Musk has even built, you know, there's, there's all this initiative right now with Starship and Starbase and getting everything to Mars and all of that just suddenly became way more real with this landing. And, you know, I think a lot of people are like, oh, I don't know, this is kind of pie in the sky stuff. This doesn't really make sense. Well, I don't know. If you look back 30 years ago before, like when I was born, we didn't have cell phones. Fast forward now, 31, we literally have our first Neuralink implanted in somebody's mind to see how that can evolve, that Elon Musk just planted in there. And that is within a span of 31 years. It goes from basically nothing to potentially controlling one's like mind with their thoughts with an external tool. It's crazy. So the advance of AI, the advance of space exploration is happening and is wild. And I am like, as you guys can see, I'm pretty passionate and pretty excited about this. We are transmitting and uh, welcome to the moon. What's to come, basically what, what we know is gonna happen now that we have land on the moon is we're transmitting signals. All this research is gonna be done from Odysseus that's landed on the moon right now. It's gonna give the signals and the information back to Earth. And then we're gonna have Artemis II launch and then Artemis III launch in 2026, which will be the first humans going back to the moon, which ideally would have them settle on the moon to create you know, the start of cities and understanding how we can evolve the human race on another planet. You know, this is crazy stuff. This is not just happening because of no reason. There is something there, just like any other research that we've done, just like all of this research we've done with food and healthcare and all these things, like there's always another piece to learn that changes and shifts and opens up our realities in ways that we didn't even think were there. Part of the reason we haven't gone back to space in the last 52 years isn't because there hasn't been a desire to do so, it's because the funding changes and the access to this changes because every four to eight years, we get a new president and that new president has their own belief system and an initiative around exploring space. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. So President Bush, he wanted to explore space. Today, I announce a new plan to explore space and extend a human presence across our solar system. Our second goal is to develop and test a new spacecraft. The crew exploration vehicle will be capable of ferrying astronauts and scientists to the space station after the shuttle is retired. But the main purpose of this spacecraft will be to carry astronauts beyond our orbit to other worlds. President Obama wanted to, but he shifted the directive and created what's called the SLA, which changed our entire initiative and had it kind of made us need to restart all over. And then President Trump, he went back and also wanted to actually then go back to space and reinitiate a lot of what President Bush was doing. And now we have President Biden who seems to be kind of like distant from this and he's not actually really making any changes, which if that stays the same, basically means that we can progress and move forward with space exploration, which in my opinion is so important and so necessary for us to understand what our realities actually are here on earth. It's like we're trying to understand a data set with only 50% of the data set. We know that there's so much more to explore about consciousness. We know that there's so much more to explore about science. All of us here geek out on food and how our realities have completely shifted health-wise and personality-wise and confidence-wise based off the food that we're ingesting. And that's just new information that we have. That's just a new discovery that we would never have discovered had we not kind of pushed the bounds a little bit. So for me, I'm like, what is waiting for us to discover. What is it out there that we don't quite yet understand, that we need to understand, and that we will understand by going and doing these missions. And this first step of getting to the moon is literally like mind blowing. I am so stoked on it. I had an expert come on actually, who talked about what it might look like to live underneath the surface of the moon in lava tubes to avoid you know, the, the radiation or whatever that we might need to avoid. He's an expert in this. I highly recommend that if you guys are interested in that, I would watch that video next because it is beyond fascinating and it's just expanding our concept of consciousness and reality and technology and what is a potential for us humans and what we can do. So I hope you guys like this video. Please let me know what your thoughts are. I'm very curious. If it's me and I had the opportunity to go to the moon, I would go. Would you, I, like I would be curious to see if you would go because most people I know would say no but I would go. So let me know your thoughts, like this, share this, 
please subscribe if you like to know about all things human optimization, exploration, life hacks, all the other stuff that we've got going on. And I will keep you updated about everything that we know about this mission to the moon and the landing that we just had. I will keep you updated. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one.